and they're going to see if they can get the Summit League season started off the right way for them. Meanwhile, opposed tonight by the reigning Summit League Coach of the Year, Todd Lee, in his third year here at the University of South Dakota. As we get set for tip, Tom Tassos Comateros. And DeShang Weaver jumping up. Oral Roberts controls the tap, and we are underway here in Vermilion. A lot of familiar faces on both sides tonight. As both teams return a heavy portion of last year's group, the Shang Weaver for three, left it a little short. And USD gets a stop to start. So here's Mason Archambault, who we talked about in the open, leading score by an eyelash over Cruz Perro Hunt, who's got the basketball now for USD. Both guys just over 13 points per contest. Hunt from 18 feet to get things started for USD. They're on the board first, 2 nothing. And South Dakota shows great patience there on that first possession, really working it side to side. Now, on this NJ, this is an Oral Roberts team that loves the three-point shot. They take 33 of them a game. Carlos Jurgens to the cup plus the foul, so a chance at a three-point play for the Estonia native. Paul Mills would love to see this guy get going. He's been struggling yes. a little bit late here, Brad. Just three points per contest, 21 point, 21% shooting over his last four games. So maybe a play right there to try yeah. and get him going a little bit. And Oral Roberts, I mentioned that. I mean, they love to shoot the three, but they can if they can get some stuff going to the basket. That opens up that three even more. And Paul Mills knows that for his team. So a good bucket there to get themselves on the board. Three-point play successful for Jurgens and Oral Roberts for the first time tonight. Out in front, 3-2. That Let's continue to work it around the outside. Here's Peril Hunt again. Dumps it off. Comatero spots up for three. That's wide left. Johnny on the spot, Xavier Fuller for the putback. And Fuller is a terrific rebounder at the guard spot and crashed well there. South Dakota, that's something they're going to look to do in this game, offensive board. Fuller just under five rebounds per game. As Jurgens tries to reset the offense. Here's Kareem Thompson now off the dribble. Too strong off the window. Hunter Goodrick the board this time, and here's Peril Hunt. Another good look here off the dump for Kamateros, but this one a little too strong. And pulled in by Weaver. Two good looks there in the last two trips for Tassos Kamateros. Lotsis didn't get anything there for Oral Roberts. Yeah, Lotsis is a terrific three-point shooter. You are not going to see him miss one that badly very often. Just, I don't know if they didn't have a good grip on it or what there. Lotsis had a monster game last time out against Texas Arlington at 21 points, Brad. 8 of 11 shooting. He was 5 of 8 from 3. Also had 11 rebounds, 4 steals in that contest as they completed the non-conference portion of their schedule with a 71-62 win over UTA. A look at that range for Max Acemas, who's never af afraid to pull the trigger. Yeah, he's going to get his three-point attempts up. If, if he's guarded, he'll just move back further until he's open. <laughs> Good action there. Up and under for Perro Hunt. Nice five from Archambault. The Coyotes are in front 6-3 early. In a lot of ways, both these teams are going to try to attack the same way. There's not going to be a lot of traditional low post play in this game. You're going to see both these teams spread the floor, look to get basket cuts, and open perimeter shots. A little bit of small ball out there. Inside out, Jurgens for three. That one won't go. Solid defense in the half court in the early going here from South Dakota. Well, just good scouting report there. You help on a Smith. You're willing to leave Jurgens, who struggled shooting it open in the corner. You'll take your chances with him. Goodrick, plenty of space for him. Steps back, pulls the trigger. Left-handed three too long, and a rebound here for Jurgens. And he could maybe say the same thing for Oral Roberts. They're going to be more than willing to let Goodrick step back and take threes in this game. Offensive foul whistled 
against DeShang Weaver there. That'll be his first, the first team's foul of this first half. Both teams with one here as we approach the four-minute mark of the opening frame. Now, certainly foul something we've got to keep an eye on because really neither one of these teams deep at all when it comes to bench scoring. So they need their starting fives to play well and be on the floor for big minutes. Taro's trying to thread the needle there. And now picks up a cheap one. Pursuing the loose ball. So a foul on Kamateros. 15.48 to play first. Then we get done talking about how important it is for these yes. teams, given their depth in terms of scoring, uh, to have their top five guys out on the floor as long as possible. Tassos Kamateros picks up his second foul and has to go straight to the bench. Yeah, that's a huge loss for South Dakota because they lose a physical defender and rebounder, and then the result, you see DeShang Weaver, they're getting a lob. That brings Oral Roberts back within one there. Let's get a look at the starting lineup brought to you by Dakota Bank. Obviously, Tassos Camateros now out of the lineup. Damani Hayes replacing him on the floor for Todd Lee and the Coyotes right now. Essentially moves Goodrick over to the five and in a game like this That's a much better way for South Dakota to go to try to defend Oral Roberts a perimeter oriented team Here gets picks up a foul there Elijah Lufile checking in for the first time for Oral Roberts along with the Oklahoma transfer Trey Phipps His dad was a, an assistant at ORU for a long time under Scott Sutton Phipps really may be the one player on both teams that can bring some scoring off the bench. He is a terrific three-point shooter and has had a couple of big games for them this year doing just that. Archambeau cut off there nicely by Lufile. Here's Fuller, and he walked with it. Now you won't see South Dakota make mistakes like that very often today. They only average about 12 turnovers over a game. They are a very solid team with the ball in their hands. Starting five for Oral Roberts. Again, brought to you by Dakota Bank. Kareem Thompson, Max Asmus, Jurgens, Weaver, Lotsis. All of those guys playing significant roles on this team last season when it ended up winning the Summit League Tournament Championship. As Jurgens gets one to go. That's his first three-point make, Brad, since November 29th against Tulsa. It's hard to believe he has now only made seven on the year. He's a much better shooter than what his statistics have shown so far. He missed 12 straight before making that one. But ORU back on top now, 8-6. As we approach 14 minutes to play first half, Arshan goes three off the mark. Reason Jurgen's gonna open the last possession. Ace miss making passes to get his teammates open. He made a pretty good one right there, but a quick shot that doesn't go in. Cut the tiles with Fuller. Change of direction there from Fuller. Drops it back. Here's Hayes. You can see Hayes has a little wrap there on his left. Man, it's his left thumb, and that affects his shooting a little bit. Arrow Hunt sidesteps Jurgens and knocks down the triple. First three-pointer of the night for South Dakota. And the back and forth early continues. 9-8 Coyotes. Even though Oral Roberts does put in their traditional post, Ufile, as you mentioned, number one out there. South Dakota still stay small here. And a foul there on Goodrick is Ace Miss tried to work around the big fella. So free throws coming up now for Max Ace Miss for the first time tonight. He's an 87% shooter on the season. As Nikola Zizic ready to check into the ball game for the Coyotes. And now he'll match up with Mufile. And I'll be a little bit more of a traditional post on post, but. Yeah, you see there the drive that time by Ace Miss, and that's the part of his game that. As he continues to develop, I mean, he's one of the best three-point shooters in the country. Demonstrated that fully last year, but the more he can put it on the deck and create as well, well, that makes him even tougher to guard. Yeah, he came in to the night, fourth in the country in three-pointers made per game, over four of them. Fifth in three-pointers made total with 42. 
and 13th in the NCAA in three-point attempts with 97. But as you said, so far tonight, he's been creating off the dribble a little bit more and drawing that defense. Created some good looks for some of his teammates. Yeah, he's got two assists already. Here's Zizic. There's that battle inside, working on Lufile. Advantage Lufile this time. I'm not sure that's the shot selection Todd Lee wants out of his team. Yeah, maybe throw it into the post, but play off of it. Oh, well, there's Aismas. Does not need a lot of space, Brad. He'll pull that trigger. With just about anybody in front of him, you give him an inch, and he will take it. That was the first field goal of the night for Ace Miss. And ORU has its largest lead thus far at four points. Pero Hunt, though, feeling it himself from downtown. He's got a couple of triples. And off to another good start. Already into double figures. Cruz Pero Hunt with ten points in the first eight minutes of this game. Yeah, he's hit all four shots he's taken. Defense there from Hayes on Aismas. Here's Phipps now. Trying to drive around our shampoo. Leaves it. Lufile lays it in. Now South Dakota's playing Oral Roberts very tightly on the perimeter. Again, taking that three-point shot away. And the Golden Eagles taking advantage, getting to the rim off the bounce. Barrow Hunt. Tough turnaround shot. It's five for five wow. to start the night. Cruz Perro on red hot. Came in shooting 40% on the year. Just a touch better from outside at 41%. But you can't get more efficient than five of five. Aismas. An answer. That step back three is unstoppable. I mean, he's so quick and he doesn't need much time to get it off. And that thing is pure as can be coming off his hand. Zizic. Wow. Don't see it's a 16-footer on a Zizic a whole no lot. Kidding. He's much more of that back-to-the-basket inside kind of guy, high-percentage guy. Yep. But he made it look nice there. Knocks it down. And Yotes back within two. It's 18-16. Jurgens now back the other way going to work on Caro Hunt kept alive by Lufile Phipps off the dribble left-handed finish Now South Dakota's got to stay disciplined when the ball goes in the post there You've got to stay locked up on your guy on the perimeter there No reason to help in or Roberts probably isn't looking to score a lot on the block That's tough to do Hayes working on Francis Lotsis trying to get it through that length of Lotsis though disrupted the pass and created the turnover here's Aismas back the other way all the way to the rim easy lay in for Aismas just like that he's in double figures I mean it can come quick from a guy that averages 20 points a game South Dakota with this lineup, I mean, they're really playing with three scores. I mean, Zizic is getting a few things done, but Oral Roberts really locking up right now on the South Dakota guards and not making it easy for them to catch. Zizic off the run. He's got four off the bench for the Coyotes here. And Ace is still on attack and gets the lay it again, plus the foul. Chance at a three-point play for Max Aismas when we come back. No, Max led him to March or the first rather since Steph Curry did it in the NCAA tournament to score 25 in each of his first three tournament games. So Max Aismas, as we said, one of the best individual seasons in Summer League history, certainly. But it's up there in terms of what he did NCAA wide last no year. No doubt about it. And uh I mean, in this day and age, too, of the of the transfer portal and guys being able to move, I mean, what a privilege and a treat that we still have him in the Summit League. And, uh, boy, he is playing up to that level here tonight. Boogie Anderson onto the floor right now for South Dakota. First time we've seen him almost kind of put back there. Eric Oliver out onto the floor as well for USD. Well, Anderson's in the game because of who he's guarding right now. They're going to try Anderson to see if he can slow down Ace Miss. Oh, well, he got him to miss, so that's a start. 
And a foul off the ball there as they scramble for the loose one. With This will go against Elijah Lufile as he tried to battle inside with Damani Hayes. Now the reason Todd Lee wants to go to Boogie Anderson, a little more size, six foot three. Trying to get in the hand, or trying to get in the face, excuse me, of Max Aces, maybe keep the ball out of his hands. It'll be Anderson setting up the offense, guarded by Ace Mess. Here's Oliver. Harold Hunt, who's been red hot to start. Six for six from the field. Cruz Perel Hunt. Who's just had a terrific season. Shooting the ball over 40% from three. And a terrific in this game getting to the rim as well. Outs back the other way off the turnover. Goodrick cut it deep. Too strong. And it's back into the hands of Aismas. Isaac McBride, number 10 out there for Oral Roberts. First time on the floor tonight for Paul Mills in the Golden Eagles. Wide open Phipps, and he is not going to miss shots that look like that. That's when Oral Roberts is really at their best. When they can move it quickly like that on the perimeter, the defense can't catch up, Jay. And, yes, they just spread you with so many guys that are lethal from that arc. Another guy shooting at 40% from the arc this season, Phipps. It's his first of the night there. Tough fall away jumper there from Oliver. Phipps briefly lost the handle. Now gives way to Aspis. Had it poked away by Anderson. Kyle's push it ahead. Off the run. Won't go. A couple of empty possessions for USD in transition when they really could have used a hoop here to close this up. Isaac McBride for three, and it doesn't matter who pulls the trigger for this team right now. That's already five three-pointers for Oral Roberts. Remember, we said they make just about 13 per game, almost halfway there, and we've still got just under seven minutes to play first half as we get a timeout on the floor. ORU humming offensively. Golden Eagles. Five three-pointers here in this first half. They lead it by 11. And they're shooting 46% right now in this game so far. 46% overall for three. 58% from the field. Golden Eagles 11 of 19 overall. Tassos Cabateros back on the floor now for South Dakota with those two fouls. Who can get going down here for South Dakota on this end? There's Cabateros gets a bucket. Carol Hunt really is the only one who scored much for this team. And made buckets make it a lot easier on this end because now you can set your D a little bit. Off Oral Roberts goes down as a turnover. That'll be the fourth of the half for Oral Roberts. As you said, Perro Hunt, the only guy who's scored with any kind of consistency thus far tonight, Brad. He's on the bench right now, so they're going to have yeah, to figure it exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah, he's got 14 of their 22. Keep feeding the post. That's a place where South Dakota has some advantage. Is Commentator seeing if he can get into the paint. Now we'll try from outside. Back-to-back -back buckets for Tassos Cometeros coming back off the bench with a little fire. And if there's a guy in South Dakota's lineup that has more room to grow as far as where his stats are at right now, it's probably Cometeros. Only averaging eight, he could easily be a double-figure scorer for this team. Ray Phipps has been a weapon in this first half as well. He scores again. Phipps, you mentioned transfer from the University of Oklahoma. Been a good score off the bench. Block shot there from Loxus. Offensive rebound. Put back plus the foul. Cometeros again. And remember, he's out there playing with two fouls. Had to go to the bench fairly early in this half. And Todd Lee putting his starting center back in there. And if you think back to last year, when, when Cometeros, I think, really kind of emerged as a... As a viable option for South Dakota inside and, and became a, a, a great contributor for them. It was because he played with a ton of energy and I think the coaching staff would like to see more of that out of Kama Terrace and they certainly have had it here since that last time out, Jay. Yeah, they have. That's eight straight points for the junior out of Athens, Greece now. 
So as you said, Brad, that's that's his season average right there yeah, in a exactly. span of three trips down the floor. And he's he's flipped the complexion of this game. It was an 11 point deficit now down to five, and they're going to chip into it here or try to. Amateros thought about it with the hot hand. Now Fuller. Hey, coaches, generally speaking, are not a fan of three point shots that are taken. After you've had to, the ball in your hands and you've had to think about it for a few seconds. Those usually don't go in. Weaver lost his footing and the basketball there. It is another turnover for Oral Roberts. Yeah, six of them now for a team that's also very good taking care of it usually. Kamateros. <laughs> Offensive foul there. That's going to be a moving screen on Weaver as he handed it. Off to A. Smith, and that's two now on Weaver. So you've got Kamateros with two for South Dakota, Weaver with two for Oral Roberts. And Paul Mills hates seeing people like Weaver pick up fouls doing that in the mids. It may not seem like a, a big deal, but that, that's a that's a good call. I mean, you can't move like that because that's what's going to free up shooters, and you've got to be stationary there, even if it's just a rub. Kamateros gives South Dakota exactly what it wanted out of that last time out. Now he goes back to the bench having contributed seven points, or eight points rather, and not picking up the third foul as Arshan Bolt returns to the lineup. We get Sir Isaac Heron on the floor now for Oral Roberts. Number 23, freshman forward out of Houston, Texas. Here's Eric Oliver. Bride to the rack scores it. He's and gone Jim inside and out already. Exactly. I tell you, that's all created by Aceman's. He got a little bit of penetration, forced McBride's defender to come off and help, and that's what creates that driving lane. It's an example of a big time scorer getting his teammates involved. Fuller falling away, knocks it down. Xavier Fuller, that little mid range game of his, is a very large part of what makes him successful on the floor. And he's gone through a run here as Aceman attacks again and gets another left-handed finish. But Fuller, back-to-back -back games coming in, Brad. The last two of the non-conference season, 20 points in each of those contests. Yeah. Really asserting himself as a big-time scorer and two home wins for South Dakota coming into this game. Did it against Northern Arizona and then followed that up against Bellerman. And Fuller scores again, so back-to-back -back buckets for him. And the Coyotes... Hanging tough here within five. Ace missed the hole. He, uh, I mean, at some point, all you could do is laugh because there's no room to get that shot off. Boogie Anderson's defending it well. Yep. He's right in his face. There's nothing more you could do. Exactly. I mean, Anderson was up tight last time, and Ace Miss blew by him. So then he gapped him just a little bit more, and he shoots it in your face. 18 points already for Max Ace Miss to lead all scores. And ORU's lead is back to eight. Make it ten as McBride drives around the defense and scores. And the reason that looks so easy is because Oral Roberts is such a good three-point shooting team. It's really hard to bring help defense. Guarding the ball one-on-one -on -one like that, you've got to try to contain it. Anderson. I don't know if Todd Lee can afford Tasso's commentaries to stay on the bench here. Ever since he's gone out, Oral Roberts has taken back over. And that'll be an offensive foul there on Lotsis on the rebound. We're going to step away. 154 to play first half. Oral Roberts up 10 on the road in a Summit League opening. Reigning Summit League tournament champions looking very much the part here. And remember, this is a team... They lose Kevin O'Batter, major loss certainly on the inside yep. for this program coming into this year. He transfers to Texas Tech following their run to the Sweet 16 last year. Ace Miss tested the NBA waters but ended up coming back, which you knew was going to be a huge deal for this team. And frankly, they've struggled without O'Banner on the inside, establishing that pro's presence, Brad. But everything else looks like it is well-oiled and is just about as efficient as you could ask. Well, this is a team that 
is great at shooting it from the perimeter and in this game tonight they're spreading the floor and because South Dakota is threatened by that three-point line they are locked up on those guys and that's opening what we just saw there the drives to the rim and I mean you hear pick your poison and that's kind of what it is right now I think Todd Lee's sitting over there on that sideline thinking okay I really don't want to give up open threes or have to help off the result Max Asmus gets to the rim South Dakota's quite frankly had no answer here for number three and, and once you let him get going on a roll I mean it's watch out I mean he's got 20 points in this game now yeah he's averaging 20.2 per game coming in he's got 20 less than 19 minutes in to this conference opener here in Vermillion 44 34 the score South Dakota's had a decent shooting half Brad 47% Going down a little bit after that miss from Fuller. And we're going to get a tie up on the floor. So a good hustle there from Hayes to get possession back for South Dakota. But USD offensively, they've had some dry spells, certainly, Brad. But 47%, most of the time, you're going to feel okay about that. But you can't allow anybody to shoot 64% on you for a no. half, let alone 46% from three, as Oral Roberts has done thus far. And South Dakota's been a good defensive team, not only this season, but throughout Todd Lee's time here. And that's what they, they need to kind of get back to really lock it in here on this end. They get a stop there. Under a minute to go now in the half. Still a 10-point game. Cruz Barohano got off to that great start. Has been quiet here of late. Spent some time on the bench. But back out there now in crunch time of the first half. Fuller. Edged out of bounds there by Jurgens. That's a foul. It'll be his second. And the team's seventh. So that'll be a one-on-one -one situation now for Xavier Fuller. This is only going to be the second free throw attempt for South Dakota. And this is a team that shoots 22 of them a game. That's a really high number. That's one of their strengths is getting to the foul line. And this is a little bit to Oral Roberts' credit. They haven't fouled. But I think also South Dakota could be more aggressive Attacking the rim and trying to earn trips trips there Kyle's ranked 19th in the country in free throws 19th in free throws attempted coming into the night Second only behind South Dakota State in both of those categories, so th They are very much an attack oriented yes. team on the offensive side and most of the stuff We've seen them get in and around the basket tonight has been kind of back to the basket set up thing not that Slashing to the rack like we've seen Oral Roberts do on the near side Which tends to draw a little bit more contact exactly yeah, you flip it the other way then Oral Roberts has been there six times already and made all six of them This team's Pretty well dead even at the line on the year 71% just to touch over for both of them and There's about one second difference between the shot clock and the game clock here and a Smith's Looking to create an opportunity. Lots of backdoor pass. And it's on the lay-in. Carroll Hunt tapped that up through the cylinder. It's a goal 10. Points count for Ace Miss. And the clock stops with 2.6 seconds remaining as Heron checks back into the game. This is just a really nice play. And Ace Miss is a super heady player. And he just saw his guy overplaying him. Easy backdoor cut. Archambeau beyond half court counts if it goes and it almost did So USD could have used that After watching Oral Roberts throw just about it. We couldn't have fans and uh, boy It just wasn't the same certainly looking forward to getting that back rolling In March even though I have to admit it still seems like quite a ways away. We haven't even turned the calendar yet, right? It does Pre-Christmas Summit League hoops for the first time in my memory. I don't know if it's happened before, but it's been a long time since we've had pre-holiday conference play. Green Thompson back out there now for Oral Roberts to start this second half. He's got it. Turnaround is good. And ORU picks up right where it left off offensively with a made basket. Elijah Lufila getting a start here in this second half as well. Shane Weaver on the bench. 
That's interesting because that certainly changes Oral Roberts offensively. A little bit more of a pulse presence, and they lose a shooter that Weaver can bring them from the perimeter, even though he's a big. Arrow Hunt well off the mark there. And a last touch by Hunter Goodrick. That's the first miss from outside for Cruz Perro Hunt, who hit a couple of them in the first half. Now let's see. What does South Dakota try to do on this end of the floor to shake things up? Defensive game plan did not go like they had hoped in that first 20. Go right back to Thompson. Tough turnaround there. Left it short. Rebound muscled for, and it will go to South Dakota there as Lufile and Camatero scrambled for them along the baseline. Camateros, who was in that foul trouble in the first half, back out there to start. It's the original starting five for Todd Lee and company here to open this second half. Fuller cut off along the baseline. That's really good help there. By Lufile inside. South Dakota needs to get more screens and ball movement here. Just a lot of individuals having to make plays for them offensively right now. It's tough to sustain for 40 minutes. Ace miss. In and out. Board. And that's going to be an offense or a loose ball foul, rather, on Lufile as he got tied up with Comateros on the rebound. Here's another look. Yeah, he grabbed Comateros' his shoulder there as he tried to go for it. That's the first foul on Lefile. Here's Comateros working on Lotsis. Oh, backdoor pass. What a find. Passos Comateros to Hunter Goodrick for the lay-in. Really, after picking up those two fouls, Comatos has made such a positive impact on this game for South Dakota. They're going to desperately need him on the floor for most of the second half. He smiths around Goodrick and just leans into it, Brad. Got it to creep up over the rim and through. So he's crafty, skilled, all the things you want from a scoring guard. Comateros, little baby hook inside. And again, he talked about that positive impact when he's been able to be out yeah. there. South Dakota has been really at its peak offensively when they've been able Absolutely. to go through 34. And he shows why again there. Aspis kicks it out. Jurgens for three. Left that one short. Archambles goes up against the rebound. Finish plus the foul for Hunter Goodrick and a chance at a three-point play. That foul will go against Lotsis. This is where you can attack Oral Roberts defensively. Golden Eagles not strong in the paint. Lotsis at 6-7, but a bit undersized as far as strength goes, and Goodrick takes it right to the rim. off for Goodrick. Let's put it out two of five from the line on the night. Good hustle there by Thompson to keep the offensive rebound alive. And a fresh 20 seconds here for Oral Roberts and a second chance. And that foul will go against Xavier Fuller. That'll be his first, the team's first in the second half with 16.39 to play. Well, you don't want to give a team that's shooting nearly 60% second chances. And, you know, even though Oral Roberts and Paul Mills' team is not real big and physical, they are actually really good on the old glass. And the reason is because there's a lot of long rebounds when they play offensively because they take a lot of perimeter shots. They're good at running those down and, and tracking them down. Jurgens goes right through Peril Hunt to score it. Jurgens has had a nice bounce back kind of night for him as we talked about coming in last four games in our conference play really struggled Just three points a game over those last four, but he's got eight here tonight and The ORU lead has matched its largest at 11, but it's right back down to nine as Camatero strikes again And what's South Dakota doing? They're just attacking whoever Lotsis is guarding in the low post right now Jurgens off the feet again from Ace Miss. 
Almost ended up with another long rebound. But back into the front court with Fuller. Steps around, Lotsis rolls off the rim. Offensive rebound for Goodrick, and he's fouled by Lotsis. So two more free throws coming up for the Coyotes. When we come back, see a little bit more aggression out of the home team here to start the second half. South Dakota got no transition opportunities. And this is a team that's good in transition. They have really good guard play. Why? Because they were taking the ball out of the net every time. Oral Roberts was making so many shots. So getting a few more defensive stops, get out and run a little bit more. That's how you can chip into this lead. Hunter Goodrick has struggled at the free throw line so far this year at 12 of 33 coming into the night. He's 0 for 2 now, pending this second one. Got that one to go. So the lead down to 8 now, 52-44. But I think we both agree it all starts here. you got to get some stops on this end of the floor, right? That offense can do Absolutely. what it needs to, certainly. But if you don't, you don't keep the ball out of the bucket over here, it's going to be a problem. And that's the shots right there South Dakota's going to have to take their chances with. You, you hope Ace Miss is willing to drive in there and then shoot over your length. And you got to hope if you're South Dakota, he misses more of those than he makes. And he missed one that time. Now Or Roberts bringing the double team to help Lotsis out in the low post. Fuller fade away from the baseline. Again, that jumper from Xavier Fuller. I think that's how he scored all his points yes. to this point. Well, he's six foot four. I think a lot of people don't realize he's got really good size and length to do just that shoot over defenders. Jurgens attacking Goodrick. Tried to slip it through there. Poked away and a steal here for Cruz Perro Hunt. Threads the needle. And a finish. Fuller wanted a little bit more pizzazz to it, but it'll count just the same. Don't look now, this thing slips down to a four-point lead very quickly here as it's a 7-0 run for the Coyotes. And that over just about the last 90 seconds of this game, so it's happened pretty quick. There it gets. That one looked good, but rolled out a little too strong as he tried to attack Hunter Goodrick there. Here's Peril Hunt now. 14 footer rattles home and it's a two-point ball game South Dakota a 9-0 run here over the last couple of minutes time out Oral Roberts with 14 minutes to play if it seems life happens live Half, but certainly worth keeping an eye on going forward the coyote big man but right out of the break, Isaac McBride was another nice bench piece in that first half for Paul Mills. Attacks the rim and scores to end what was a 9-0 run for South Dakota. Fuller almost threw it down. Taken away by Phipps. Saw McBride and Phipps both score efficiently off the bench in that first half. Here is McBride again. Both those guys transfers from Power 5 schools. Take a look at that last defensive sequence. Blocked there by Francis. Lotz is just denying yep. the slam attempt from Xavier Fuller. Lotz is one of the better shot blockers in the Summit League. As a matter of fact, had 13 coming into the night. That was second best in the conference. He used every bit of that length there. Ride unable to score this time. Good defense there from South Dakota. Talked how important it was going to be for USD to get some stops defensively, Brad, to get themselves back into contention in this game. They have done that here yeah, early I mean, in the second half. Held all Robert scoreless for almost two and a half minutes. And now Cruz Perro Hunt with his third three-pointer of the night. It's a one-point ball game. 54-53. Got Goodrick to leave his feet, yeah. draws the foul. Hunter Goodrick's gotten caught in some just difficult matchups. And that's going to happen. You're, you're trying to guard this Oral Roberts team because they're so good on the perimeter. And Todd Lee's kind of stayed pretty true to his, his starting lineup in this game, Jay. He's left Goodrick and Tom Terrace out there together. And it's worked well in the second half because they've gotten good post touches. They've scored more efficiently in this 
second half as a result. They're shooting 67%, but then you give up a little bit of that on the other end. Oh, Roberts still perfect at the foul line. Now 8 of 8 after those two from McBride. Stretch the lead back to 3. The guy who has not scored tonight. The leading scorer for USD, Mason Archambault. Quiet night offensively, but this guy right here has been pretty effective. Steps around, lots of draws the foul, and Kamateros will head to the strike. And Oral Roberts has not been able to slow down Kamateros on the block one-on-one. -on -one. That's four fouls now on Francis Lotsis. Oh, he's the guy they've been attacking this whole second half. Whoever he's guarded, whether it's been Goodrick or Kamateros, they've gone right at him on the block. And mission accomplished to get him in foul trouble. Sir Isaac Heron checks in, replacing Lotsis. Freshman out of Houston, Texas. Couple of free throws made there for Kamateros. It's a one-point game again at 56-55. Thompson found himself all alone. A little confusion that time defensively, and Thompson looked about as surprised as anyone <laughs> yeah. that that was as easy as it was inside. Well, the, the big difference is South Dakota just hasn't given up a lot of those here in the second half. That's why they've been able to get back in this thing. And Sir Isaac Heron leans into Kamateros and gets called for the cylinder violation there. But we're going to step away. 11.36 to play. Second provider of the Coyotes. Charlie feels a little bit more like dancing with the way he's seeing his team play here in the second half. Coyotes have gotten within one. Currently trailed by three as we hit the 11.30 mark of this second half. Comateros partially blocked there by Heron. And here comes Thompson the other way. Aceness guarded by Goodrick and he backs it out. They've done a much better job on Ace He's only got two points in this half, Jay, after torching the Nets for 22 in the first frame. Created a little space there. Shook off Goodrick. But a tough shot nonetheless, and that one wouldn't fall. Now, Goodrick's doing a good job on him. They've really put a lot of size on Ace and that has bothered him. This has been the go-to guy offensively here in the second half. Dossos Camateros working on... Heron gets it back, second chance. Now the ball hits the deck. It's going to stay with South Dakota on the possession arrow. But two cracks at it that time for Comenteros. And really for the most part so far, Oral Roberts not bringing help on the defensive post. And as you said, they are feeding it hard inside South Dakota is. You know, Eric Oliver checking in, replacing... Goodrick, so Cows go a little smaller here now. As Archambault tries to scoop it through, but couldn't get all the way around Ace Miss. Defense there from the sharpshooter from ORU, and now Kareem Thompson cans one on the other end. And the lead just like that back to six with 10 22 to go. We get a timeout on the floor. Out of the break, 10-22 to play, second half. Mason Archambault, the Coyotes have fought valiant here, valiantly here in the second half. As we said, gotten as close as one a couple of different times, but unable to get over the hump to this point. And ORU, after that three from Kareem Thompson, has stretched it back out to six, which is as large of a, large of a lead as they've enjoyed for quite some time since the break. Here's Xavier Fuller. Got it back. Kept alive by Kamateros and Fuller with 13 points now. One of three Coyotes in double figures. There's no question the key to this comeback here in the second half so far has been shutting down Ace Miss on this end. But the supporting cast, Jay, is really starting to pick up some of that slack for Oral Roberts. Phipps with his second triple of the night. 
64-57 now. Here's a fifth. Thompson hit a three right before that, so back-to-back -back triples. Cavateros up and over Heron scores again. Tassos Cavateros is having himself a ball game already with a season high 16 points on the night. Too strong from Aismas who came down awkwardly underneath the stanchion. And a little slow to get up but it looks no worse for the wear as he hustles back into the front court here. Fuller draws the defense and the foul. That'll go against Kareem Thompson and two free throws coming up for Fuller. That's just a beautiful bounce pass by Hero Hunt there to find his teammate Fuller cutting there. And actually, really, I mean, Ace Miss not being back in that play, I think, did disrupt defensively Oral Roberts because a couple guys kind of were trying to zone up. Two were trying to guard three, and that freed up that cut. And Fuller took advantage of it. So Ishmael Plett checking in now as Paul Mills tries to handle that big guy rotation a little bit inside with lots of in foul trouble. We've seen Sir Isaac Herod now Plett for the first time tonight gets out there as they try to find a yep. solution for Tassos Comateros right now. Yeah, they started Ufile as well to start this half. Haven't seen him back. One or two at the line that time for Fuller. Kyle's are six of ten at the stripe so far tonight. And the lead is four for ORU. Here's McBride, a little shake and bake there. Working on Peril Hunt gets the roll. That was a nifty little finish there yeah. from Isaac McBride, the transfer out of Vanderbilt. Yeah, he's got a really quick first up. Oh, Roberts now going to have a much more physical player on Comateros to try to slow him down. They get the switch now. Can USD take advantage of it? And a foul there on Phipps. As Comateros tried to take advantage of that size. I mean, that's just really smart basketball there. You get the switch, take advantage of what you've got in South Dakota, and Tassos Comateros did exactly that. Who are you? Or South Dakota, rather, already into the bonus. That's the seventh team foul on Oral Roberts. Just two thus far for South Dakota. So one and one here for Comateros. And he can't get it. Now those are costly misses at the free throw line when it's a front end. It's the team that shoots 71% at the stripe coming into the night. They're at 55%, 6 of 11 in this one. Phipps working on Oliver. Rebound there for Comateros. Oliver. Tough little fadeaway. First field goal of the night for Eric Oliver. Well, you can see how much it means to South Dakota offensively when they can get defensive stops because it gives them a chance to get out in the open floor. Attack early in possessions. Phipps tried to drop it off. Knocked out of bounds there by Comatero. Oral Roberts will have it when we come back. Golden Eagles leading by four. 66-60 reflected in the numbers there for Cruz Barrel Hunt, Mason Archambault, and Xavier Fuller. Two of those guys have done it tonight. The one, the one guy that has not contributed offensively thus far, at least in the scoring book, has been that guy right there, Mason Archambault. Yeah. He's, he's even taken a lot of shots. And he's 0 for 3. The other two guys combining right now for 33. How about that? Out of the break. Sir Isaac Heron on the alley-oop for the finish, and it's a six-point lead for Oral Roberts. Those are big possessions. When you can manufacture a bucket for your team, great job by Paul Mills and his staff. And again, Tomateros has just been going to work. It does, has not mattered who they've matched up with him defensively. He's been on attack ever since the half. Well, he's burying his defender. I mean, look at where he's catching the thing. I mean, right on the block. These are easy shots for him. Tough finish there in traffic for Aismas. Just Kyle's quickly back out. Say, just the fourth point, though, for Aismas in this half. That is why South Dakota got themselves back in this game now. They're down six with six and a half to go. Feet got tangled up there with Heron, and it's a foul. It'll send Comateros back to the free throw line for another one-and-one -one situation. 
This out of the last time out, Acemas to Sir Isaac Heron. I mean, there are incredible athletes all over this Oral Roberts roster, and Sir Isaac Heron certainly has the appearance of a guy that's we're going to be talking about for a while with Paul Mills' team. Yeah, he's a really good-looking freshman out of Houston. I'll tell you, that was a really nice pass, too, by Acemas. Yeah, he put was. that thing right where it needed to be. So, uh, Cabotero, Sir, in the bonus. And got it both. So Tassos, Cabateros. And 19 throws. points now. Yeah. Important for South Dakota to keep hitting those. They now raise it up to 7 to 12. Ace Miss cut off in the paint. Inside out. Thompson's three off the mark. Rebound tapped out of bounds by Plett. It'll go over to South Dakota. But Cabateros, as a matter of fact, he's up to 20 points now. He's overtaken Perro Hunt for the team high. But between the two of them, Brad, 39 points on 15 of 25 shooting. Yeah, terrific efficiency from those two. And they have just continued to feed, especially Cabateros here in this second half. Got some space. Too strong. Perro Hunt almost. Able to sky up and grab that board, but Ace Miss comes away with it. Pulls the trigger, and a four-point opportunity coming here for Max Ace Miss as Peril Hunt stepped into him and didn't give him a spot to land this. Well, that's the problem when Ace Miss is the primary ball handler. I mean, how do you really keep the ball out of his hands? And he's just sizing up that three as he's bringing it up the floor. I mean, it's not... Honestly, great offense, but when you have that type of talent, I mean, for Oral Roberts, that's actually a pretty quality shot for them because that guy can make it more often than he's going to miss it. Doesn't miss any of those. And as a matter of fact, that's the first miss at the foul line tonight for Oral Roberts. Keeps it at a seven-point lead. As we approach the five-and-a-half-minute mark of this second half. Kyle's again trying to get it into Cometeros. Plett in there defensively trying to be a lot more physical against USD's post. And a lot of contact there between McBride and Fuller. You had to wonder if a call was coming eventually, and it does. And now Xavier Fuller will head to the free throw line. That's the 19th foul on Oral Roberts. That's a key stat right now. USD will be shooting free throws the rest of the way. Two of them after this attempt here. She is a one and one. Just the first foul on McBride as Fuller knocks down the first to earn the bonus. So Fuller, the third coyote in double figures. You've got 20 for Cometeros, 19 for Perro Hunt, and now 15. Make it 16 for Xavier Fuller, who's approaching potentially a third consecutive 20-point game here tonight. Shook off Oliver. Didn't take advantage of that space he created for himself. Here's McBride. Step back for three. Oliver soars in to grab the rebound. Now he spots up. Left it short. Good scramble on the floor there. Aspis comes away with it. Plenty. The guy keeping it alive for Oral Roberts. Good job by South Dakota, though, getting the ball stopped in transition. He's just picked up his dribble. Quick trigger there from Phipps and another three. And a flopping warning going against Phipps. Yeah, that's definitely a good call. There wasn't a lot of contact there. No harm this time, but if there's another one of these on Oral Roberts, it will result in a one-shot tech. But still, that's a big time man. Third three-pointer of the night for Trey Phipps, who has been as good as advertised in the shooting department, certainly here tonight off the bench for Oral Roberts. I mean, you take that five-point lead, you push it to eight. And that just, I mean, a three-possession lead here as this game starts to wind down. That margin for error shrinking for this Coyote team on their home floor. Turn around again for Fuller. He's up to 18 now. A lot of that damage from Fuller has come here in the second half. Between 
him and Cavateros, they've handled a lot of the heavy lifting offensively for the Coyotes since the break. Archambault pokes it away. Ninth turnover of the night for Oral Roberts. Harrow Hunt swings it out. One extra pass. Here's Archambault. Dakota trying to claw their way back into this thing. North Dakota. A little EDC action for you on a Tuesday night here in December. Six-point game out of the break here. Oral Roberts has not allowed USD to get over the hump, although the Coyotes have fought back a couple of times within one, but that out of the break. Another big bucket, this one from McBride. Boy, I tell you what, him and Fitz have been outstanding off the bench tonight for Paul Mills and the Golden Eagles. Absolutely. This is 15 points now for McBride. Fitz hit a big three just the possession before. So those two guys making huge impacts. Guys that averaging about nine a game apiece. Far exceeding that here tonight. And now South Dakota's got a ton of pressure on them with just 320 to go down nine here. USD, four of 16 from three, one of their last nine. Well, ORU has reached double digits yet again. They've got ten triples on the night. That missed there from Archambault, who's still looking for his first points of the ball game. Aspis was down on the floor there, and Phipps. Aspis got tied up there. He was just laying on the floor, and... Comateros tripped over the top of him, led yeah. to a good three-point look there from Phipps. Kyle's fortunate he was unable to make that one. Uh, Another miss on this yeah, end here South for Perro Hunt. Yeah, just too many empty possessions here with the game on the line for the Coyotes. And now, I mean, you got to start thinking about, you can consider start fouling here a little bit. Can you get a free-throw shooter on the line and miss a few for Oral Roberts? And, and that's just going to be the fifth team foul for South Dakota so you can be aggressive here start taking some chances if you're USD see if you can get a steal or like I said maybe start thinking about putting the Golden Eagles on the line see if they can make some front ends and one-on-ones that was the fifth team foul there went against Xavier Fuller his third I mean you've got a few guys out here for all Roberts that haven't been to the line much this year at all Green Thompson's taken six attempts all year Let's a guy that hasn't been there really at all. Bride on the drive. Rebound pulled in. Tapped out by Comateros and grabbed by Archambault. Got to have a quality possession here. Under two minutes to play. They got a hold there. South Coast trying to slide Fuller into the post. Goes against Kareem Thompson. So Xavier Fuller will head back to the free throw line. He's four of six on the night. At the tenth team foul, though, this, so this is the double bonus all the way. South Dakota shoot to the rest of this ball game. Now, good news—you get the clock stop, get a chance to score, and also important if Todd Lee wants to set up some full court pressure, this makes that a lot easier to do. Let's see if USD gets into that here. Elijah Lufile back into the lineup for the Golden Eagles replacing Ishmael Platt who gave them some quality minutes there off the bench. Guy that came in averaging just five minutes per game. Second free throw no good for Fuller. Costly miss there. And here's where this gets tough because the guy at the ball right now can really control a game late if he needs to. Step you were talking about from McBride. He's got it back. Quick trigger for three. He left it short. Not sure why he chose to shoot it there. He saw an eight on the clock. Arshat Bolt. Just can't get one to go tonight. Harold Hunt shakes it off. 17 footer is good. Timeout on the floor with 115 to play. Cruz Harold Hunt. The second Kyle to reach. 
access to original programming, in-depth storytelling, replays, and so much more. Stay ahead of the action with Bitco Sports Plus, the official app of Bitco Sports. Sign up today, BitcoSportsPlus.com. Or are, or are you handling the pressure well out of the timeout? They lead by six here as we approach one minute to play in this Summit League opener. You've got to get a stop if you're going to play this out like USD's choosing to do here. Basket probably puts this game out of reach. Ace miss. Maybe ends it right there. Another three-pointer for Max Aspis. It's been a quiet second half by his standards, Brad, but... Boy, he hits a big one late here. So Xavier Fuller will inbound. 50.7 seconds remaining. Now it's got to move quick now. Archambeau drops it off. Comateros to the inside. Fuller rolls off. Really nice defense by Oral Roberts. They were ready for that set. They helped each other and they got a big time stop. They're going to be able to dribble this thing out. South Dakota's trying to get a steal. And they do force the turnover with 22.7 seconds remaining. And they're going to double check the clock here to make sure. I was. As it ends up. Right, too big of a hole for South Dakota really to climb out of. It's really been even here in the second half. Yeah. In fact, the Kyles have outscored ORU 38-36 since the break. So all the difference made in that opening 20 minutes. Kyles has got to get a shot off here. Now yeah, Robert's switching everything, and it's taking everything away. Fuller no good. Rebound, Ace Smith, and that's... Will do it. It's an impressive road showing to open Summit League play tonight for Max Aismas and the Golden Eagles. They get the win 82 73. So, an outstanding start to the conference season for Paul Mills and company.